Can we carry on our chat talking all things Bournemouth and takeover? I think we shall. Uh, let's speak to Talk Sports football reporter, superstar as well. Alex Cook joins us now. Cookie, hello, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. By the way, I'm reliably informed that Michael Jordan has also got a signed Darren Bent shirt. Apparently, it's no, no. an England World Cup one. Oh, you know what? It's I, Marcus Bent. Much pressure, Cookie. Why are you coming over here just talking nonsense? <laughs> I couldn't resist. I couldn't resist. <laughs> How much would you pay for a Darren Bent signed Sunderland shirt? Um, I would let him give me five pounds plus the shirt. <laughs> Where's the beach ball shirt, Bentley? Do you know where that is? Uh, the actual beach ball shirt. I don't, I don't know. I think my dad's got it. I think. Is he? Yeah. Has, you actually made a point of keeping it after that goal, did well, you? Well, I keep quite a lot of my shirts. But I didn't. Oh, but right. I started giving them away. Okay. All right. Crookie, right. Crookie. 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 Uh, we were just talking about Bournemouth and this possible takeover bid before the break. I was just saying to Bentley that I think you know when you consider that Chelsea cost four point two five billion, one hundred and fifty pounds, a bit of a snip, isn't it, for a Premier League club? One hundred fifty quid. 150 million, 150 sorry. quid certainly would <laughs> well, be. Hold on, which, which one is it? Is it 150 pounds? <laughs> I think it's near 150 million. I'm yeah. told it's north of, of 100, but you're right. Um, you know, that is small fry, uh, really, when it comes to Chelsea. But that's because I think part of the reason this takeover is happening, uh, a consortium led by the American Bill Foley, has been very successful um, in the world of uh, hockey. And uh, I think the reason that he's coming in is to build on the infrastructure, um, maybe improve the stadium, the training ground as well. They've got planning permission and work is underway uh, for a state-of-the-art training ground. And I think just to build on the foundations and, and some brilliant foundations that have been left by Max Demin, uh, the current owner, that Bournemouth were a League One side when he took over. They've twice graced the Premier League now. First time they were there for five years, newly promoted as well. And I think Demin just feels the time is right for a change. And I think most Bournemouth supporters... Uh, we'll see him as a bit of a hero, really, because historically Bournemouth are nowhere near one of the biggest clubs in the land. And here they are now uh, seemingly being purchased by a, a, a big deal in America. You look at his personal net worth, $1.2 billion, according to Forbes, uh, Bill Foley is worth. So I think Bournemouth fans can be pretty optimistic about this takeover. So, Crookie, you said there he's worth $1.2 billion. What level of investment can Bournemouth fans expect? Because you know what it's like. Once a club has an owner coming with a lot of money, the fans usually expect, well, here comes all the, the big the big hitters. What do you think, what type of sums do you think he'll, he'll put into the club in terms of player transfers? I, d I don't think we're looking at maybe even Newcastle level. Um, I don't think it's that kind of takeover. The, the proof will be in the pudding. Um, I only found out about this earlier this week. And then it really started to gather uh, momentum overnight. So I think we have to, to wait and see, really. But what it should do is help consolidate Bournemouth um, as a mainstay in the Premier League. I still think this season will be difficult because obviously they didn't have the summer um, that maybe they would have been able to because I think at that stage it was pretty clear that Max Demim uh, wasn't going to be the long-term owner of the football club. Having said that, he still spent... Uh, fairly big money on a couple uh, of additions, which he wasn't really obliged to do. Um, you think about it, if you were selling a house, you wouldn't suddenly build a brand new conservatory and stick on a swimming pool, would you? Um, mm. And that, that's basically what he did, not just in the summer, but in January as well, when Scott Parker, the former manager, wanted reinforcements to make sure they got over the line in terms of promotion. Maxim Demin, as he has done throughout his Bournemouth tenure, provided. So um, I think January will be interesting. I think there will be funds for whoever is in charge. I heard you bestowing the virtues of maybe Gary O'Neill, the interim manager, keeping the job on a long-term basis. I still sense that's unlikely uh, at this stage. I think Bournemouth will probably look to bring in a more experienced manager. But this all explains a lot, doesn't it? It explains why maybe the funds that Scott Parker had been hoping for weren't available in the summer because, as I mentioned, the club were up for sale. As I understand, Scott Parker was aware of that situation. So I do wonder uh, maybe if he could have been a bit more patient and, and maybe kept his job. And it also explains why Bournemouth haven't named a permanent successor for Scott Parker yet, because obviously whoever owns the football club wants to say on who the head coach stroke manager will be. They have a short list, um, but I think Bill Foley, once this takeover goes through, and I'm told it could happen in weeks as opposed to months, he will want to say on, on the direction of travel in terms of the head coach. Mm. Crookie, how about this for a question? I hope you're sitting down. Um, so we were, we were discussing this just before the break, the fact that if he if he is successful, there'll be 10 clubs, half of the clubs in the Premier League, mm. that will have some kind of US investment. Why do you think that it's heavily populated by US investors when you think that the other countries around the world that have got gazillions amounts of pounds, China, Japan, Germany, France as well, why do you think it's so appealing to the Americans at the moment? 
Uh, I think you'd have to ask them, really. You'd have to ask okay, Tom Bowley. We've, what... we've got we've got Bill on the bill. Are you there? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I think um, I think the Premier League is attractive for overseas businessmen because it is such a huge global product. I hate using the word product to describe our national game and the, the top level, but that's what it's become. It's the most watched sport um, across the globe. It's the richest football league in the world, and uh, the successful businessmen want a piece of the pie. I know that Simon Jordan this morning was suggesting that maybe it's not good for the long-term future of the game in this country that so many overseas investors are getting their hands on on top football clubs. But I guess it's a reflection that maybe British businessmen don't have the deep enough pockets to, to really service these football clubs. I think the days when somebody like Jack Walker uh, could go in and buy Blackburn and bankroll his hometown team to the Premier League title are probably in the past but if you're Bournemouth you're not going to turn down the opportunity of American investment just because you're maybe worried mm. that there are too many American owners in the Premier League that they want to be on that gravy train and why not? Cookie well answered congratulations Good you, as I was asking the question I thought what a horrible question I'm glad it's him not me that's been asked this one but you answered it perfectly as always thanks so much for coming on have a good weekend Cheers, guys. Enjoy. Cheers, there you go, the wonderful Alex Crook, who insulted Darren Bent. Um, I've decided I'm going to turn today's show into the Michael Jordan show. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to give you a little fact every so often. Oh. What's his wealth? What's Michael <laughs> Jordan's wealth? See, this, this though, is, is, is oh. uh, debatable. So well, if I type the... Michael Jordan net worth yeah, into no. Google... And so, hold on, so you're telling me you know more than Google? No, I don't. But I've, I've listened to a lot of NBA that right. well, podcast and stuff. This is, I'm getting my... Well, so, I'm so say, say, I either go to okay, Darren I'm, Bent. I'm going to say 1.7 billion. How do you know that? Is it? It's exactly 1.7 billion, yeah. Is it? Yeah, see? I've seen the figures before. But yeah. I, 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 I feel he should be worth more than that. Is that what you feel? Have a look how much Jordan makes per year. Have a look at that. All right, I'll have a look. In the break. Just, just ever so quickly, right? You know we're trying to get Santan... I know, shut crazy. You know we're trying to get Santan Dave on the show? Yeah. And we will eventually get him. You've heard of six degrees of separation, right? Yeah. Where you're six people away from everyone. Mm. Do we know anyone that knows anyone that knows anyone to get Michael Jordan on the show? It would never happen. Why would it never happen? Because, uh, trust me, he's, he's impossible to get to. Do you know as well, he, he only signs one particular brand of card. So if you've got a picture of him, yeah, he, won't, he sign won't sign it. it. I'm like that, though. I'm like that. Oh, God. Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.